This is my Halocrafters S120 receiver, shortwave receiver that I'm going to recap. It is working, and it's actually working on band 4, which uh, was a stretch for these older radios. They, I think they did it more to show off, but it is working on band 4. Which means ongoing. Right now it's on it's band 4. Here, it's where I love grammar, because it helps you to really understand that the BE transformed by the new year of your mind, that transformation... Now, right now, that frequency is at 13.845. But you look, it's just um, above 14 here, and the band spread is not where it's supposed to be. It's down here around 35. That's how I had to zoom in on it. Um, so the, normally the band spread should be at 100, then you fine-tune by turning it down. So, you know, it's probably off frequency a little bit. But it is picking up on band 4, and it's picking up on the other shortwave stations. But there is a hum, so I do want to recap it. Let me see, you might be able to hear the hum. Now, the radio is in pretty nice shape. Here's the, let me back this up a little bit. Here's the cabinet. Uh, it was a little dirty, but I cleaned it up, came out very nice. The uh, glass came out very nice. And the back of it looks pretty good. Let me spin it around. Here's the back of it. Right now I got it hooked up to uh, a dipole antenna out in the backyard is called a Alpha Delta DXLB. Only half of it's hooked up because this doesn't have two terminals. It has a ground and an antenna terminal. Uh, they did come, this clip here and this clip here did hold a telescope, telescoping antenna that you could actually mount to the screw and they were often lost over the years as this one was. So that's it. I'm going to recap it and uh, I'll show you what I do as I go along. Uh, to get to the inside of the radio, it's very simple. You need, just need to take out these four uh, screws on the feet. The feet come off and the radio will slide right out. Okay, I've got the four feet out and the cover comes off just like that. Now you can see the inside. Bring it a little closer. So it's got some, uh, you know, fairly old capacitors. This radio was made from 1960 to 1963, and it's got some old Black Cat capacitors in there, in there. Um, so I'll, I'll be changing those out with a kit that I got from Hayseed Hamfest, and I might replace the power cord with a polarized plug just to be safe. Although it does have this really nice cord that says it's got the H on it, right from Halicrafters. You can see uh, maybe the little H on there. Um, maybe just to be safe. Right now the uh, power cord comes in here and it looks like it just goes to both sides of the on-off switch. Um, this is basically a 4-tube radio. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to test the tubes. I have two other donor radios that uh, I will test the tubes in and I'll use the best of them. This is the, uh, the main filter capacitor, the one that uh, will sometimes cause hum. And this is my kit from Hayseed Hamfest. It's got a new filter capacitor. I should have had this out. And a handful of uh, capacitors to, to, uh, to update it. They even sent some uh, solder wick with it and what else oh i wanted to show you but by the way this if you leave this back cover on uh, then it's really easy to work on because it gives it gives nice support um i'll show you the internal speaker there's the internal speaker it is working now these radios came with a selenium rectifier to convert uh, ac voltage into dc voltage and that is, let me get something of plastic to point with here. That's this green thing right here. I'm going to change that over to a diode and a resistor. Um, these things were inexpensive and they worked well, but uh, after many years of service, they can fail. 
Um, I can hear. I heard they they can uh, kind of explode too, and they let smoke into the room. And selenium is a poison to humans, so it's a good idea to change that out. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to try to figure out which way the best way is. So according to the schematic, the B plus coming off the selenium rectifier is supposed to be 150 volts. It says it right here, 150 volts. It also says here and here. So I'm going to show you uh, what it's actually putting out. It's quite a bit less, and I'm hoping after I do it, it will be higher. And then once I do the, uh, the diode in, in uh, place of it, it'll be even higher than that. Sure. I'm going to turn it on. Let's see where this thing settles down once it warms up. I've seen this done on uh, YouTube before. It goes up high and then once it settles in it should go down. Be nice if you could read it. There we are. So we're up to about 130. Now it's dropping as the tubes put a load on it. And it's down to 77 volts and it's just going to keep going down to about, I think last time I did this was about 66. I'm going to stop it here. It's at about 75. Okay, I don't do this very often. So one of the first things I did was took the schematic and I highlighted the capacitors that are in the kit. And then I wrote the actual part number like C16, this 0.1 microfarad capacitor. I actually marked it C16, so when I come across it in the radio, I will uh, be able to find it faster. But first, I think I'm going to replace the uh, filter capacitor. This is the filter capacitor, and this is where it goes. I had to loosen this nut. Now this is loose, and I'll show you the bottom. And the bottom, where's my plastic tool? misplaced it but the bottom is right in there so like you see there's a yellow wire coming out a red wire you probably can't see all the other wires but they zigzag around and through here so I'm gonna have to uh, make some notes as to where everything goes and then uh, I'll replace that first here I have the five wires disconnected from the bottom of the filter capacitor and I made meticulous notes as to where they go and now I'll pull it out from the other side Here's the other side. Let's see if it pulls right out. Ta -da! There it is. The old filter capacitor. With the values right on it. The new one has uh, slightly stronger values. That's what Hayseed Hamfest does. Now I'll put the uh, new one in. Here's the new one. Okay, the filter capacitor is in. Here's the bottom view. Uh, there was a red wire. There are two yellow wires, one goes over here, and a black wire, and a blue wire. So like I said, I made meticulous notes as to where everything went. I unsoldered them from there and got them back into the same place, uh, right into the same holes. When I do the uh, other capacitors, I will probably use the leads that are already there so I don't uh, disturb all the old solder joints. And hang on, I'll show you. Here's the top. Um, the, cold, the new capacitor is slightly fatter than the old capacitor. And the clamp won't go all the way around it. Here's the old screw. That's all the screw was. I'll see if I can find a longer screw to put in there, but truthfully, it's tight as a drum in there. But I'll see if I can get a longer screw before I'm done. Okay, now I'm going to start changing the capacitors and since I'm not used to doing this I'll start with the a big one first this one here is a 
0.047 microfarad and it goes from pin 7 of the 12BE6 to ground. So I'll give that a try. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, leave the leads in there uh, coming up out and then put the new one on there uh, around those leads. Okay, I got the first one in there loosely. I uh, made a physical connection here and here. Uh, squeeze the squeeze them together. Now I'll make a solder connection and then cut off this excess. There, now I've got two of them in. I've got that one in and soldered in, and that one in and soldered in. So I made a, a loop there, and then crushed them down together. Uh, double loop, crushed them together, and then I did solder. So you have the mechanical connection and then the electrical connection. Now I'll move on through the radio and do the other. Okay, I got four of them in. You can see the yellow ones here. And then I started to run into some trouble. The other ones look like uh, resistors to me because they have color stripes on them. There's five left. One, two, three, four, uh, five. And wasn't quite sure what the values were. The schematic is not the easiest thing for me to read. So I went and asked my friend Google, is there... A color chart for capacitors and Google said yes and gave me one so here's the uh, ones I took out they're nice and well marked so I knew which, exactly which ones they were and then here's the chart I found that uh, explains the colors so now I'm gonna go and uh, replace the other five using the color chart okay all nine capacitors are in and this is the finished project the bright yellow capacitors are the new ones. Here are the old ones, along with the old filter cap. So now we'll turn it. So that's a success. So I will find the stronger tubes and do an alignment next. Okay, just a quick update. I did have to replace two tubes. I replaced the 12AV6, which is the audio amp tube, and the 12BE6, which is the converter tube. And I had two donor radios for the tubes. The one on the bottom is a Lafayette HE48, I think, or HE40, and the one on top is another Halocrafters S120. I actually got that off of eBay. It was a local sale. I needed the uh, I needed the chrome off of it, and now I've used two tubes out of it. And the four tube the four tubes in both radios were uh, good. So I took the two better ones out of the Halocrafters because they still had the Halocrafters logo on them, and I put them in this. And right now is the uh, a contest called the CQ Worldwide Worked All Prefix Contest. I should be in it myself, but I'm doing this. So here it is on 40 meters. Not exactly great filtering, but you guys probably knew that. That's just a quick test of that. Okay, now I'm going to move on to bypassing the selenium rectifier with a diode. I've seen a couple of different ways to do this, and I think I've settled on taking the diode and just bridging it across the terminals of the selenium rectifier. So here is the diode between the yellow and the green clip lead, and they're on there. And uh, the voltage is now 141 when it's settled in. It starts up at about 149. Well, now it says 142. And uh, settles down there. There is a slight hum. I got it in standby. Let me see if we can hear it. There is a slight hum, but there was a slight hum before when I was all done with the uh, capacitors. And now it's just a little bit louder. I'm going to take it out of uh, standby. Right now it's on band 4 at... Uh, 13600 I'm picking up all kinds of stuff now on band 4 including a little bit of CB channel 6 uh, also known as the Super Bowl I picked up some of that a minute ago 
So I think I'll disconnect the diode. You can hear it, it gets a little bit quieter. See, the volume went down a little bit. And then it picks up a little bit. Put it back in standby. So, um, this definitely helped. The voltage is right where I want it. It's at uh, 142, and uh, the schematic says 150 is good. I'm going to say that's close enough. So I'll solder that on there and uh, continue. Okay, now I've got the diode soldered across the terminals of the selenium rectifier, and the voltage is at 142. So now we'll go into the next step, and I want to thank John WA6TLP Tango Lima Papa uh, for the idea to do it this way. He has a web page explaining it, and uh, seemed to work out the best. So thanks to John for that idea.